Um, so Uncle Ben, I thought he, Martin Sheen done a really good job with Uncle Ben, very wise and unfortunately every time I see him now I instantly think of the elusive man, sorry. But I thought he done a good job. The only thing I didn't like is how he died. Um, he didn't die the same way as he did in the comics or in the Spider-Man. He still gets shot um, by someone who Spider-Man could who Peter could have stopped uh, at the time, but he doesn't. He actually gets shot wrestling with a gun. He doesn't get his final speech, he just dies. And the way that he says I love you to Peter is via voicemail, which we don't get to hear till the end, which we actually don't get to see him leaving the voicemail, we don't even get to see him talking on the phone, which was really annoying and a really missed opportunity in my opinion. Um, so Uncle Ben was in it for a good life. Marshin done a good job. And I thought he done he was funny, he was entertaining, he was very wise for his age. Um, but I kinda didn't like the fact that he kinda just got him like that. Um, he did get killed on screen. But it, it was more like he happened to be there, basically. It wasn't like in the first, in Spider-Man, which I preferred the scene from Spider-Man, where he knew that he was at the library waiting on Peter, and this, he kind of just happened to be walking by, looking for Peter, who had run away after an argument, and he just happened to be walking by the exact same place, so it's just more of a coincidence, so it, it wasn't really that good. It was okay, but I think they could have done a better job, in my opinion, if I'm going to be honest, but overall, I enjoyed that part. Um, the final con... Okay, if you've seen the Spider-Man trilogy and you've seen my review, you know I despise the American scenes in this, is which I call, dub them, where basically Spider-Man poses with an American flag, where it shows like all of the set, all of New York teaming up against the villain, throwing shit, and especially this one, one from Spider-Man Two, where Spider-Man's mask is off, which really, is. in fact, hold on. One thing else I've got to say about this film: Spider-Man takes his mask off way too many times in this, in my opinion. I mean, I think he has the mask off more than he has it on. Um, he takes it off. Uh, he doesn't. Okay, by the end of this film, at least four people know who he really is. Gwen Stacy, who he reveals because he was hitting on her, which is stupid. Um, Gwen Stacy's dad, who actually almost arrests him, and sad what happens to him at the end, I won't spoil that until the end. Um, it's kind of hinted at that, 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 uh, that Aunt May knows who he is, because she kind of puts two and two together, which is okay. And the lizard, of course, figures out him. Do you know how the lizard figures out? He, he, Spider-Man tries, Peter tries to take a picture of him in the sewers, and he leaves his camera that says property of Peter Parker on the back of it. Which is stupid! If you're a superhero, you don't take something with you that says property of blah 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 You don't do that! But understandably, he's learning the lizard, blah blah blah. It really, it really ticked me off that bit. So, yeah. At least four people know he has, and he has his mask off at least half of the time. Oh, and uh, don't forget the helicopter pilot as well, who was shining the fucking light on him, who sees who he is. So, yeah, but half, but six people probably know who he is, who he really is now. So, let's get to the other, the biggest con. As I say, is the Americanization scenes, more than one in particular, is from Spider-Man 2, where he's in the tree, and that scene pissed me off on this. This scene happens in this movie. Not that scene, but a scene like it happens in this movie. And I dubbed it this is kind of spoiler territory, so I'm going to answer the simple question, should you want to see this in the pictures? If you're a Spider-Man fan, it's a must-see in my opinion, but I wouldn't say you definitely have to see it. You can wait for it on DVD in my opinion. Um, and also, if you really enjoyed the original Spider-Man trilogy, you don't want to go see this because you'll hate it, I can guarantee it. Because um, my mum's partner loves the original, original trilogy, except for Spider-Man 3 of course. Uh, he thinks they're actually better than this, so... That's his opinion. My opinion is this is better than the first one from Tobey Maguire. <coughs> Excuse me. So, definitely if you're a Spider-Man fan, I definitely say you go and see it. If you hated the original trilogy, go and see it. If you love the original trilogy, don't go see it. Simple as so. I would say it's a must-see. I'd say if you can, wait for it on DVD because it's not really a desperate movie yet to see in the picture. So, it's kind of worth it, but overall, not really. Um, so, let me just get to the spoiler. So, click off this video now. Um, anyone who doesn't want spoilers, fuck off now. I'm up, being honest, fuck off now. Now go. There's an X button up there. In fact, I might even leave an annotation where you can go and close this video. Just go. If you don't want spoilers, go. Okay, you're still here. For those that are still here, spoilers. Spoilers. The scene that I'm talking about is the crane scene. Which, let me guess, that's the other thing. At one point in the movie, Spider-Man saves a little kid from dying on a bridge, and his dad happens to be there, and he goes, I owe you one. I guess what that guy happens to be, he happens to be a crane driver who sees Spider-Man after he's been shot in the leg, and for some reason being shot in the leg prevents him from swinging on his webs. 
You answer that. And this crane guy is like, time to mobilise. And he literally phones up every other single fucking crane driver leading up to the Oscorp building, which is at least 50 blocks away, to get the cranes in that area to swing over and set up a path for Spider-Man. The American scene. Fuck that. That scene almost ruined the movie for me. Because I fucking hate scenes like I know what Spider-Man's meant to be, but that scene drove me up the wall. And of course, he uh, Spider-Man's like, gotta do this. Gotta do this. And I will say one thing, the crane operators in New York get fucking up those cranes fast. Those cranes are at least the size of buildings and they get it set up in less than a minute. Fuck your SAS, the crane operators of New York get ready like that. If they, that's where they go, fuck man, I think I'll phone them up if I need help, because they mobilise faster than the fucking SAS. Which is fucking extraordinary. Holy shit, they get set up quack. Quack? Why the fuck did I quack? Quack. Quickly. Which drove me up the wall. It wasn't as bad as the ones from Spider-Man. He, he didn't pose an American flag, which thank fucking Jesus he didn't. But that scene dropped really, really awful, in my opinion, and should not have been in the movie, uh, in my opinion. It almost completely ruined it, in my opinion. Um, but it's the, the end scene salvaged it, with uh, the fight scene with uh, the, the lizard and, uh, Gwen St and uh, Chief Stacy, who unfortunately gets killed by the lizard. Spoiler. Um, which is a really good scene, in, in my opinion. It, it's kind of sad, but what can you do? Um, but so that scene really drove me up the fucking wall. The, the crane operators, whoop, they were ready like that. It's like, he happened to know every crane operator in New York, and every other crane, or, crane operator in New York happened to like Spider-Man, and happened to be at their post, and happened to get ready, and happened to be this, and happened to be that, and happened to be that, equals cranes. Save the day. That should have been called Amazing Spider-Man and the Crane Man. That was that's really should have been fucking gone because that's basically what happened. Which really drove me out the wall, but didn't really. It almost ruined the movie. I'm so sad that they had to put an Americanization scene. I don't know if it's contra if they're contractually obliged obliged if they were forced to put it in. Basically, I can't say that con contractually. A buy, a blind, a blind, a blah 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 blah. Basically, they were forced to put it in, which almost ruined the movie, in my opinion. But overall, I enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see what they do with the, with the rest of the series. It was a really good reboot, in my opinion. Definitely better than the first Spider Man movie, in my opinion. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. Spider Man versus the Amazing Spider Man? I'm going to have to go with the Amazing Spider Man. I preferred that over there. There were some cheesy fucking scenes in the in the, the Amazing Spider Man, but they weren't as bad as the original one, in my opinion. And in my opinion, Andrew Garfield really sells this film for me. He's definitely better than Tobey Maguire, in my opinion. So, definitely, have Amazing Spider Man gets a thumbs up from me. Uh, if you're a Spider Man fan, definitely must see. Otherwise, just wait for it on DVD, in my opinion. Um, I hope they fix the problems in the next one. So, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought. Did you like The Amazing Spider-Man? Did you not like The Amazing Spider-Man? And let me know what you thought of this review. Let, get, let's get a discussion going on down below. Did you like The Amazing Spider-Man? Didn't you like The Amazing Spider-Man? What do you prefer? Do you prefer the trilogy? Or do you prefer the, the reboot? What's your preference? So, overall, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. And if you haven't already, button up there. You can click and join the clan and subscribe to this channel and join the clan where we can all geek out together. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you all later. Ciao for now. Mwah.